Howdy folks, this is Fred AA7BQ with Steve W7SCG coming to you from Carefree, Arizona on the first night of a new ICOM 7610 that we just got in the mail today. We're showing this 7610 right on top of and right next to Steve's ICOM 7600, the previous generation. And one of the first things that you'll notice about it is it's pretty much exactly the same size as the 7600 and well I would say from a distance they look quite similar but uh, as soon as you get any closer than arm's length there's an immediate uh, and apparent difference uh, in so many ways and we're going to talk about that this evening. Let's start off by looking at some of the obvious differences. First of all the screen on the 7610 is uh, it looks to be about maybe half an inch wider I'd say than the 7600 but one of the important things about it is that you can hook up an external monitor to it and it's got a DVI uh, type video connector on the back which is really nice. We hooked it up to uh, a monitor earlier today and the picture was just outstanding it, it, and it also looked good at a larger resolution unlike some of the earlier radios. Another thing we wanted to show was that the, uh, the scope is completely configurable. I just changed it to orange, for example, along the line. Compare that to green down here for the uh, 7600. Setting it is, is done just like everything else right on the screen. There's a button over here that says expand slash set. We'll just hold that down and here's the, the color selections and save just to change that main color and uh, we can adjust it that way. For instance, uh, we're making a, a bright lime green now uh, for the waveform display. They expand, uh, it allows you to have either a large or a small waterfall. Uh, as you can see, the meters also scale uh, right along with it, uh, and that uh, helps a lot uh, uh, to keep it looking good. Yeah, the more, the more that we play with this display, for example, take a look here, you'll see a bunch of uh, waveforms, and these are conversations. Each vertical line there is a, is a conversation on the 80 meter band. If you touch it, it takes a snapshot. As you can see right in the center of the screen there, there's a, 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 a part of the window that has stopped moving. That's the snapshot from a moment ago. You touch anywhere else and it goes away. So if you're uh, listening and there's someone, a signal that you're particularly interested in or strange or splatter or something like that, you can just touch it real quick and, and record it. That also saves to the SD card right here on the front of the box. Super cool feature. Okay, I've moved the camera a bit closer now to get a better look at the features and we're gonna take a look across the front of the front panel. On the upper left is the power button. As you can see, I don't know if you can see it from this light, but it's illuminated. There's a small blue backlight there. Just move the light a little. Uh, next to this, you've got the, the transmit button, timer, the automatic tuner. It's got a great tuner in it, by the way. Same one that uh, Icon has made famous. Uh, this is your main uh, uh, audio, audio frequency and RF as well as squelch. Uh, below here is your noise blanker and noise reduction buttons. And then beneath those two are the sub-band, the sub-AF and the sub-RF and the squelch. Very nice things. Here on the left you've got a USB uh, input port. You can hook a keyboard up to it. There's two USBs. You can hook a keyboard up to it if you want and, and uh, mouse. a mouse. Uh, we haven't done that yet. We'll be looking forward to trying that out soon. I believe, correct me if I'm wrong, it'll do ready right out of the box. with just PSK31 also. And PSK31, look at that. Uh, looking down here below, SD card slot that I pointed out earlier. Uh, this is the main menu button. Uh, press that to, uh, to get to the graphical menu. Uh, all sorts of things in the menu. I don't think we're going to go through everything here, but we'll just take a quick look at a few. Uh, that one basically turns the scope on and off. Uh, some of your audio, audio level controls are there. Uh, there are voice memories, a lot of voice memories. You can pick them by just uh, touching the screen. Uh, lots of choices for meters. You can use analog meters, bar graph meters, digital meters, uh, moving needle meters. Uh, take your pick there. Very handy. Uh, 
in the memories, uh, it's got a gazillion memories, 17 pages I guess according to this display and since this radio just came out of the box we haven't saved anything in the memory yet. Uh, and then uh, looking back at other things, uh, there's uh, the scanning and uh, these are these setup for if you're going to do frequency scanning. Uh, this is the memo pad for memo pad memories. Uh, if you want to record your audio, you'll do it right here and uh, you can either play files or record them. We don't know if you can play a file on the air or not. Uh, somebody else will have to tell us that. Uh, your antenna selections. Uh, there's two different antenna connectors on the back and you can assign them uh, to whichever frequency band you want. That's very handy. Automatic band switching on the antenna uh, as well as tuning. Uh, you know, can't beat it. Uh, the set menu over here is the larger menu for the more detailed, more low-level things. Uh, you get your tone control, various functions like the beep levels and the band edge and things of that nature. As you can see here, as I'm scrolling through them, there's just hundreds of things to, to toy with. Uh, basically, every time you see a menu setting here, consider, well, what if they had to put a button on the front of the machine? How big would this thing be? Well, it would be the size of the whole table, I think. There's just so many things to, to control there. Uh, there's connectors. Uh, uh, you can set here what kind of signal comes out uh, in, in the back. Uh, you can select, uh, you know, whether or not uh, AF squelch, for example, or, or output is uh, either audio or IF. Uh, I'm not sure what all these things are, are doing in this context right now, but, but suffice to say that uh, when you get one of these, if if you're a computer guy, you're going to go through these menus, you're going to spend a lot of time, and you're going to find some really neat things. If you're not a computer guy, uh, you're just going to play elsewhere in the radio, and that's the nice thing about it. It's simple for people that uh, uh, need it to be simple, and it's got all the complexity and advanced technology that you need if that's your thing. Um, and as you can see down here, there's network. Uh, right now it's not connected to a network, but obviously it does. There's an ethernet connector on the back. And uh, the display settings are neat. Uh, you can do the brightness as well as the backlight. Now on this particular unit, we have not figured out uh, why the, LED, uh, the screen brightness control doesn't work. As you can see, we're turning it up and down. Nothing's happening uh, by, uh, by the backlight control, however, works very nicely. So we're going to have to talk to ICOM and ask them, is, is this supposed to do something? I, I really think it is, and apparently it's not on this radio. So we'll have a look at it. I'm sure ICOM will fix it. Uh, probably a software update, too. And that's another neat thing about the radio is when something that can be fixed with software, you can put it on an SD card, slip it in the slot, and uh, you're off and running with a, with a uh, factory fresh uh, set of software and uh, just scrolling down the menu here you can see there's just dozens of things. The external display, uh, curiously, we found this uh, since we uh, first looked at it. The external display actually has, uh, it can be turned on and off here and you can also set the screen resolution of the external display right here. Uh, we had it set to 800 by 480 and it also does 800 by 600. Uh, not super high def but more than enough uh, for a decent display or a decent reproduction of the, of the main radio screen in operation. Let's take a look at, uh, of course, uh, all these are soft buttons and basically everything you see on the screen uh, is subject to having a second function. Uh, in any event, uh, on the older ICOM, these soft buttons were, were handled by physical buttons, but on the new one, it's all on the screen. The exception being the lowest row of buttons down here. Uh, the menu, is, uh, you saw me using that. The scope turns the scope on and off. And uh, there we have uh, a, a mini scope as well as the antenna and the antenna memory display all up at the same time. Very interesting. Uh, memory, the quick memory read and write buttons, uh, auto tuning, uh, and uh, uh, other features. And the record and play down here at the bottom for voice recording. And uh, speech is in it, of course. Uh, I'm going to hit it here. So it's got that same female voice and it uh, just uh, is going to be good for our uh, vision impaired uh, hams. Uh, 
up at the top here there's a new uh, control this was not found on the 7600 this is a small uh, selector that uh, can be used to adjust the things that you see in this case uh, RF power adjustment right here you press the button to bring up the the menu and then for instance touch that to do your mic gain uh, and uh, the notch filtering and the notch width and the monitor and all that easily accessible with its own uh, with its own control knob I really like that that is very great here are your ba uh, the main the main band uh, buttons, uh, you know, going from 80 to, uh, uh, from 160 up to 6 meters. Uh, very common, very, very much just like all the other radios in that respect. Uh, you've got uh, a lot of great filtering selections here, in including a, a twin pass band. And when you adjust that, uh, I don't know if you can see on the screen up here, but you can see the... Uh, the band edges uh, displayed graphically. This has uh, been an ICOM standard for quite a while uh, and it works well. If you press on this, uh, there's a clear function. Yeah, there we go. Clears the, your filter setting out, brings it back to normal. Uh, a lot of us will use that. The key speed, if you're a CW enthusiast, adjustable right here, as you can see, as I turn this, there's uh, the key speed shows up right on the screen. Uh, that's also just very nice in this presentation. I just like the way it does that. Uh, just below that is RIT and uh, Delta Transmit, uh, which is also, and these are further controlled by the selector down below here. So if you're used to operating any modern uh, radio, and especially uh, the, any of the previous ICOMs, you're going to be completely comfortable with this. I personally uh, uh, had the uh, the ICOM 765 uh, and, uh, and also the Mark II and the Mark III models. Uh, I've used the 7600 and now the 7610 and I'm here to tell you there's, uh, I feel right at home with these radios. Right off the bat it seems like uh, this is going to be a strong performer. It's going to be the radio that everybody wants for Christmas this year and uh, one that we're all just just basically crazy about right now because it is just so new and so functional. Well, guess what? Steve uh, cheated. He went and looked at the manual and he found out that I, uh, earlier I had said that we didn't think the LED brightness worked on the, on the display controls. Here it is, LED brightness. I'm turning this uh, thing up and down and I'm going, oh, nothing's happening. Well, yes, there's something happening. It's the brightness on the uh, buttons, uh, the LEDs on the front of the screen. So if you, if you want a darker shack, you turn them down. You can see these little lights here and one there, or you can turn them up to full brightness. Uh, I uh, don't quite know what to say about that feature other than I'm sure some people will use it. I think it could, could have gone a little farther though, because it's not very bright when it's, I mean, it's still too bright when it's at minimum. So anyway, but I still, I still like it. Uh, so anyway, when in doubt, read the manual, darn it. And I wish I'd thought of that. Pretty good. The other thing I wanted to say was uh, this is day one of the 7610 hitting uh, stores throughout uh, North America. And I was extremely lucky uh, to get one of the very first units uh, from Gigaparts. Uh, Gigaparts uh, wanted to make sure that we had one. And I, so did I because uh, several months ago, I got in line and got one of their reservations uh, for the radio and I'm glad I did because as I understand it every single one of the first radios uh, that went out yesterday uh, have de completely depleted the stock. Good news is there's more coming. I think uh, I recall that within two weeks they're going to have another shipment and by the end of the, end of the year or shortly thereafter another. So uh, it's not too late to get one. It may be too late to get one for Christmas but uh, it doesn't matter you're going to want one anyway so keep in tune uh, and uh, be sure and visit gigaparts.com and uh, check them out uh, there's some of the best people in ham radio today and they'll take good care of you so uh, that's our review of the new 7610 uh, we hope you like it and we hope it's been informative and uh, that's all for now from uh, QRZ headquarters in Carefree, Arizona. This is AA7BQ and W7SCG saying 73s.